we will uh, get a, a introduction of the conference theme. So I introduce Anders Alstrand, analyst at the Swedish Council for Higher Education, to introduce us to this conference theme. Welcome, Anders. Thank you, Tobias. Um, I will be brief. Um, well, I'm Anders Alstrand, and many of you have um, seen my name in the um, information and confirmation of your participation and so forth. Um, well, recognition of prior learning has been on the agenda for quite some time, certainly at higher education institutions, um, but also within the Bologna process. And it, it came up on the agenda of the Bologna process in Berlin in 2003, where the ministers urged the higher education institutions uh, and uh, all concerned to enhance the possibilities of lifelong learning at higher education level, including recognition of prior learning. They emphasized that such action much, must be an integral part of higher education activity. And uh, it has since uh, been on the agenda for um, the Bologna process in several ministerial meetings, uh, among many other topics, of course. And uh, at the most recent um, meeting of the ministers in Yerevan 2015, it was readdressed. Um, the um, ministers committed themselves to remo remove obstacles to recognition of prior learning for the process of providing access to higher education programs and facilitating facilitating the award of qualifications on the basis of prior learning, as well as encouraging higher education institutions to improve their capacity to recognize prior learning. So, um, I mean, if, if you have to readdress the, the issue uh, after 12 years, uh, there must be a sign that there hasn't been enough being, uh, being done. And I think we will hear a little bit more about that later. Um, and it's... The RPL has not only been on the agenda for the Bologna process, but also within the EU. Uh, in 2012, the, um, the Council uh, um, issued a recommendation on validation of non-formal and informal learning uh, that the institutions or member states should have in place no later than 2018, next year, uh, arrangements for the validation of non-formal and informal learning. So. Um, there's um, it's high time to 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 work with this. Um, we don't need to argue why one should work with RPL in front of an audience like you, of course. Um, some of the arguments were in the um, the uh, the communiques uh, from the ministers, but there are many more. And um, one that a recent argument, which we already heard about, and which is in the uh, the name of the um, um, conference is the uh, the, uh, the situation of uh, refugees arriving into Europe, and uh, Sweden was very much uh, uh, a destination for many of the um, refugees. Um, and I believe, and we all believe that there will be a lot of migration even in future. So this is not just one thing that happened; it will continue happening. Um, the newly arrived um, would be an asset to our societies if we see them as such. Uh, and good RPL practices is one way of making sure that we make use of the people's competences. Um, the answers you gave in the survey, which you kindly uh, answered uh, when you uh, registered, show that you, you don't necessarily see that there's a big difference between RPL for in general and RPL for uh, refugees you sort of answered in a similar ways on these two questions. Um, well, except for language, of course, because that's a particular issue. Um, the conference title, Refugees' Impact on Bologna Reform, Recognition of Prior Learning and Inclusion in the Light of Increased Migration, came about as we asked ourselves um, if the recent migrant situation will make the issue of RPL pressing enough uh, to actually make the Bologna reform commitments concerning RPL happen. Um, the survey also <coughs> revealed uh, some things um, which you think is 
the most challenging uh, part of this. Consistency um, in the uh, evaluation and decisions was one of them. Um, actually, 69% of you answered that it's difficult or a very difficult challenge. Time-consuming process is also something that you saw as a challenging uh, thing. 81% uh, of you answered that, it's very, uh, that this is a very difficult or a difficult challenge. It takes time. Legal aspects were also um, a, a challenge, but not uh, one of the most challenging ones. So it was not the one that you, most of you said was the most challenging uh, part. That depends on the country, of course, because that's quite country-specific, I suppose. Um, we asked some open questions as well, and in, in, on the one that what is needed on national level, many of you answered um, something in line with this quote. Uh, consistent national processes and evaluation methods. That was sort of common uh, idea of many of your answers. Um, so what we what we see is that the these quotes, these uh, open answers, and also the figures that I just show you, sort of um, points out that the um, the guidelines and recommendations that already exist may not be sufficient or may not be known. Um, either way. So should there be new guidelines developed, national or European ones, based on national or European agreements? Uh, well, you will touch upon these questions during the conference and during the group discussion. Um, during the group discussion, you will actually take a made-up person uh, and um, take him or her through a simplified RPL process. We chose that approach um, for the discussions as we saw the answers in your survey, uh, in the survey. Um, because the answers also reveal that there, there is a need for sharing of experience, in particular regarding the actual RPL process. And as many of you answered that it's time consuming and difficult to have consistent uh, evaluations, it shows that the, the process is something that everybody needs to work with to have a, a clear model. Um, and like Ulf said, the discussions on this um, uh, issue will not end, um, certainly not uh, in the higher education institutions, but not in, in the Bologna process either, because there will be um, this meeting of one of the working groups of the Bologna process right after this conference. Uh, and in fact, many of the people that will attend that meeting uh, are present here today. Well, like we said, there's a lot being done at higher education institutions and elsewhere, and has been for a long time. And uh, we will hear much more about that during these two days, both in the plenary, but hopefully also in the group discussions. Like I mentioned, one thing that came out of the survey is that there's a need for learning and sharing of experience on national and European level. And here you see a word cloud uh, based on the question, what would you like to be done uh, at the international level when it comes to recognition of prior learning. And it really shows what we hope uh, to achieve with this conference. Good learning from examples of country practices and possibly also plant a seed for common RPL process for the sake of future European students. Thank you.